I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. This book belongs to me. Hello, journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know. But we've only just met. Let me introduce myself. I'm Isabel Barbara Cook. Most people call me Izzy, not Dad. He calls me Titch. He's such a numpty head. My little brother Ben calls me Isbo. I call him he who chews curtains. He likes red for breakfast and blue for dinner. And then there's... Mom, my top tea drinking buddy. my tea and this is Pinky. I think she's jealous of you, Journal. Today's my birthday. Dad made his best cake. Mum and Gran started the singing. Ben gurgled along. I blew out the candles. And made a wish. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. This is where you come in, journal.
success. A writer writes. No one ever got anything just by wanting it. I guess that birthday wish was a waste then. Gran said writing is about exploring your thoughts. It helps you unlock your feelings. I'd like to write something that will make Gran smile. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. Is that to make me feel better about my height? I want to write a story, but what kind? A romance? Science fiction? A comedy? A drama? Fairy tales? Wait, we're getting somewhere. A fantasy story? my fantasy story. Once upon a time. Ugh. No one said this would be easy. Again. From the top. Not so far away. In the land of... Astoria. A place of peace. And magic. There lived a girl named... dress. She was ready to begin her adventure. In fact, she'd been preparing for it her whole life, for she was the only apprentice of the village guardian. 
Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Robin. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... as her. Not too far away, in the land of Astoria, using her wit and imagination. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Robin. Hello, little Firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy! Let's head back to the village. The Firefly shared Robin's excitement. We should pick up my gaming marbles on the way back. They are all over the place. Because I... I fought a giant with them. Right, Firefly? Right. This one's almost as pretty as you, Firefly. Almost. Last one's my champion! Took the giant out cold. Come on, Firefly! The village is just a bit further down. Whoa! I love doing that. The bridge was an old, creaky affair. Careful, Robin. Careful. Robin imagined shark fins circling below. Phew! We made it, Firefly! And... Down! Hmm. 
Robin knew many secret paths back to the village. Like this one. She loved feeling the roots around her, as if the tree was giving her a gentle hug. Nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we go! The old cargo lift, barely used. Her own secret entrance to the village above. Robin couldn't wait to show her Firefly the village. Maybe run on the rooftops. Or prank the village builders. Look, Firefly. Happy birthday, Robin. I've made a new friend. One of our sacred fireflies. This is a very special thing indeed. Does this mean...? Yes, it is time. Would you fetch me that box, please? Ava was sure that Robin would rise to the occasion. This will store all the magic words you find. Some will stay with you, others are fleeting. They will help you overcome any obstacle. Now, your training is complete. Congratulations, new Guardian of the Fireflies. Guardian? But that's you. Guardian in retirement now. You should head to the Shrine Tree for the other Firefly's blessing. I'll join you shortly, dear. Oh, before I forget, a little something of mine to mark the occasion. Elsa Ava reached inside her pocket and handed Robin a gift. Ava's favorite pendant, set with a giant... Sapphire. Now off you go. A 
I'm so proud of you, Robin. I can't wait to try out my magic book. And all at once, Robin was surrounded by the hustle and bustle of village life. Amazing! The best thing I've seen all morning! Why do we have to be on cargo duty? Robin loved throwing stones oh, over the rooftops. Just looking at it. But not today! Ah, oh, missed! Robin has the book. Go on! <gasps> Today, the Firefly Shrine was waiting. She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right And up. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that! That's the scent of paradise. I can always use more paradise. Take ten. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Robin! Happy birthday! No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Robin. But Robin has one. But that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. about the world that lay beyond. Seen that boot for a while, Robin. You have to see the fireflies. Let me get the gate. Ah, blast! Fireflies. Soon they'd bless her as new village guardian. What's being guardian going to be like, Firefly? I hope it's adventurous. into adventure. Perfect. Robin crawled through the dank, dark tunnel. It didn't feel like being hugged at all.
rocky cliff face posed no challenge to her now. Whee! The sacred bell to announce her arrival. the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on. Show them what you can do. That's it? They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her, a timeless energy that birthed stars and forged suns. Now she was part of it. Forever. And so Robin became the new Firefly Guardian, but her biggest adventure was yet to come. journal this time of the year it gets dark so early like the day is just an accident and the night is how the world really works stars and fireflies glowing in the dark seen a firefly. Do you think that matters, Journal? Glowing things are cool, especially in nature. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. took off our shoes and socks and waded into the water. As we walked over the pebbles, they glowed beneath our toes. was called bioluminescence. Tiny plankton in the water being moved back and forth by the tide. I knew it was just little creatures, but it felt like magic. I 
I got up very early the next morning. I sneaked into the kitchen, got a jam jar, and went down to the shore to where I'd seen the plankton. Evening, I was so excited. I carefully put the jar on my bedside table. And waited for the night. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. showed Gran the jar. She laughed. Gran always says, You can't put a cork in nature. They need sunlight and nutrients from the tide. Gran knows about those things. She used to be a marine biologist. Gran bought some special algae that would grow at home. We spent the whole day planning it. Sand! Pebbles! Glass stones. A house. Corals. Lights. Water. Company. We took pictures for Gran's photo album. For our future selves to remember. How the tank took ages to fill. How we took turns stirring the algae in. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Gran. After six days, the algae was ready. I put the tank on my desk and ran my finger through the water. My own bit of magic. Izzy. That 
that was Mum. She just got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have... a weird... feeling... in my... stomach. Something I don't know how to deal with. We just heard that Gran has had a stroke. I don't want to believe it. I can't lose her. Robin woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. What's that noise? Eldereva? A giant creature is attacking our village. Attacking? I thought the fireflies protected us. There must be something wrong. Get to the tree at once. Hurry! What creature could have caused this? And suddenly, Robin was surrounded by smoke and cinders. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Robin, you gotta hide. You can hide with us. No. Broken? Nice. The lift. Oh, okay. Find your hiding spot then. She looked at her burning treetop village. This was all she knew. This was home. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Please, Robin, help me out. I'm trapped under this thing. Thank you, thank you. Never thought I'd be so glad to see my feet again. No, no, no. I need to get to the firefly tree. The bridge was beyond repair. from beyond the village gates. Robin rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping Terror. The earth yawned below her. The earth yawned below her. Phew. 
made it. That was scary. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around to extinguish them, fires burned out of control. crackled ahead. Is that fire? I've never seen a flame like that before. Sacred bell lay silent on the ground. Realization dawned on Robin. Fireflies were gone. A new determination rose in her. She would find. Fireflies. Elder Ava! Something took the fireflies. I know. Our people will fall sick without them. Don't give up hope. And may the love of this village guide you. Always. Robin took a deep breath. She knew what she had to do. She was the guardian. She would bring the fireflies back home. The earth could fall away beneath her. But she would not. He stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before. And yet it was exhilarating, wondrous, and terrifying. Fear was at her side, and hope in her heart. But things were about to get worse. Much, much worse. Is I a dragon? It's big. 
But Robin would not slow down. Not for crumbling paths. Not for giant monsters. She would make it answer to her, no matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! She raced forward and leapt. Hello, Journal. We went to see Gran today. In the hospital. It looked like... a big grey fortress. It took us a while to find the right room. Dad let me open the door. Gran has a big, cozy bed at home. Nothing like the hospital one she was in. Lying in there, she looked so small. I don't remember her being that small. Gran's eyes were open, but she struggled to... She just couldn't... Speak properly. The doctor said it was called... Dysphasia. It was caused by the stroke. Usually so talkative, but now she kept stopping. Mid sentence, as if all the words she could find were just. Out of reach, I could see it really frustrating her. And then Gran started coughing. They put an oxygen mask on her. I told her she looked like... Darth Gran.
She smiled at that. That reminds me of... Gran telling me how she took Mum to the cinema. A long, long time ago, when Mum was my age. A grand story! Gran and Mum went to see my favourite movie. Mum fell asleep. But Gran fell in love with it. When I was little, Gran would show it to me. On a battered video cassette, Gran would laugh at the robots and guess a funny smile. Whenever the scruffy looking smuggler showed up, we'd watch it until we could quote all the best lines. We laughed a lot. Once she gets out, we're gonna watch them all over again. And when the next movie arrives, Gran and I are going to go to the cinema. Together. And soon, Gran and I will be playing games again. I can't wait! This time, I'll beat all her high scores. For sure. Gran's a tough cookie. In video games. And everywhere else. I heard mum crying in her room. I've never seen her cry before. She looked so sad. I didn't know what to do. So I made her a cup of tea. Just like Grand's, she said. Mum said Gran was getting tired. I said she's getting better. Mum said she felt helpless. I said she was just sleepy. Mum said, Gran's going to... I said she's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine.
Will Graham still be Graham after this? Of course. She'll be fine. Fine. Gran is going to get better, right? I made her smile. That should help. Got to keep positive. Mum needs me to. I'll show Gran my story. Mum as well. They'll enjoy reading it. I hope it helps. What else can I do? I just need to finish my story. So, where were we? After the dragon attacked the village, Robin set out to find the fireflies, leaving Elder Ava and her village behind. Her journey took her to... a vast desert. With a guardian. Who guards it because it is... Robin had pursued the dragon far, far from home. The desert spread out before her. Dunes rising and falling like a sea of gold. Timeless and bewildering. A glow in the sand. I'll get you safely home. Another firefly. Escape from the dragon's grasp. Hey there, little one. You're safe now. Where did this wind suddenly come from? There was something very unnatural about it. is sacred. Do you hear me? Sacred. You don't look sacred at all. Go away. Now you all and stay out. But Robin's will would not break that easily. Hey! Come back here! I really need your help! I said go!
Who does that big bag of wind think he is? Look, whoever you are... Go away! I can't! I have to find the... Go away! Okay. See ya. Mr. Grumpy Pants out. The yawning cave burrowed deep into the earth. Home to wondrous life. Easily scared. Whoa. This place is huge. Robin felt like an explorer. Uncovering the unknown. Far below the rolling dunes. I wonder what used to be down here? Maybe sand-swimming desert pirates? Or one-eyed troglodytes? I hope not. Interesting. Deep under the desert sands, Robin found. Forgotten chamber. The plant recoiled at the sound of her footsteps.
foul-tempered voice drifted down to Robin. It didn't listen. I need to find it. Sacred, I said. No one listens to me anymore. Disarmed the djinn. His fury was great. Fortunately, his voice was very, very small. <laughs> but the desert guardian would not let it rest. <laughs> hey! Stop it! lonely, desolate place. Robin wondered. Why would anyone choose to live here? There had been people here. Once upon a time. What? happened to them. Who were they? Maybe I'll find answers here. The dome was empty, but for a pool of water. An inviting place to rest. Robin's thoughts drifted to the people that once had lived here. She was sure they must have been... A distant roar roused Robin from her thoughts. I'll catch you yet, dragon. The 
ancient statues toppled before Robin. Proud warriors. Protectors of their land. Behind Robin, a grumpy mumbling could be heard. <laughs> oh, him again. Let's move. <laughs> oh, that's better. I do the magic around here. You go away. It won't work. Stop that. The Desert Guardian was frantically looking for Robin. Stop hiding from me. You will surely it. find her eventually. Wouldn't he? darkness. Robin's hope guided her. Must leave. It must. They mustn't know. Hmm. Well, now I'm curious. you so worked up, old windbag? The past. The past. It stays hidden. It must. Oh. 
Oh, the old days. So little left. Best forgotten. Look, whatever it is you don't want me to see, I'm sure we can... No, 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 no. You cannot go further. Back! How can I get him to listen? Would she break the Jin statue? Or repair it? now. I... I do not understand. Why show pity to me? I did nothing to aid you. Everyone deserves a second chance. Or a tenth. Huh. What's happened here? What did you do? I failed. More than ten times. Let me show you. have brought back painful memories. That is as it should be. To feel something, even pain, after all this time. For that, I thank you. I don't need your thanks, but I do need to know if you've seen a dragon around here. It has come and gone. But there is something you should know about that beast. What was that? Hold on! Fall softly, my friend. Knowledge will be yours in time. Use it more wisely than I did.
Hello, Jana. Today at school, I got my history essay back. I wrote about Vikings. I love Vikings. Mr. Collins didn't like it. I won't be showing this to Mum. Vikings are the best. They're tall and strong. They love conquering and fire. Vikings are basically all kinds of awesome. I could really use some awesome right now. I got her old photo album out. I wanted to see Gran like I remember her when she was awesome. Bad. We're visiting the hospital later today. When we arrived, Gran was asleep. Her skin looked so thin. Almost see-through. Like tissue paper. She was Gran-shaped. But empty. I mean, that's silly, right, Journal? It's just Gran. But somehow it... isn't. It's not her! She woke up after a few minutes, but... It didn't seem like she knew who we were. Why? Why is this happening? Why her? It isn't fair! Why, Journal? Gran still can't speak properly. Like what she wants to eat? Or how she feels? And what's worse, 
everyone pretends they're having a real conversation with her, but they're not. You're doing fine, Barbara, the doctor said to her. You just need some time. Hospitals should make you better. She's so ill now. I want her better now. Just wait. Time is a healer. I thought that was his job. I wish I could help her. It makes me so mad. Mum had ordered Gran soup and a jacket potato. But when Gran tried to eat by herself, she kept dropping her cutlery. Mum had ordered her mushroom soup. Mushroom! Gran calls them nature's bogeys. mushrooms. She got that look and banged the spoon against the bowl. There was lip passing. But looking at Gran, I had to help her. change. So I ran down to the entrance hall where I'd seen a vending machine on the way in. Egg sandwich! Hurrying back to 305, I couldn't help but grin. They didn't let me back in! Adult talk. Wait outside. That's what they said. So I waited on a bench until Mum came out the room. She said nothing. Just took me to the car. We didn't speak a single word. Not at the car park. Not during our drive home. Dad had made pies for tea. I just wasn't hungry. Dad said I needed to eat. I said if Gran wasn't going to eat, neither would I. He sent me to my room.
I slammed the door really loudly and flumped onto my bed. I still had the egg sandwich. It was all mushed up. Everything is all mushed up. mean. Mum doesn't care. And Pi is stupid. Maybe I should just try to write my story. Let's see. Last time, Robin was plunging down into the dark below. But the gin spell slowed her fall. Then and there, Robin started to... But the darkness didn't care. As Robin hurtled through the darkness, her helplessness no longer made her feel scared. It made her feel frustrated, angry. She wanted answers. The Jin's magic gently released her into the unknown. Now where am I? was warm to the touch. At least it's quiet down here. Just my luck. And what's that? Molten stone. She'd seen nothing like this in her forest home. I really miss fooling around with the village kids. hung above, looking decidedly precarious. None of this seems welcoming. None at all. Careful! What is this? nature of the ceiling. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Something was unnerving about the pendulous nature of the ceiling. 
ceiling. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I'm writing that again. Something was unnerving about the pendulous nature of the ceiling. she would soon face its maker. The lava gently bubbled, as if to mock her lack of progress.
rubbish. Let's go again. Robin was a white hot rage. Exit. Robin didn't quite know what she'd encountered. Sheesh. She's so angry. The thought stuck with Robin. What's wrong with her, I wonder? Whew. I think I need a breather. A place to rest. Robin was beginning to feel the burn of loneliness. <sighs> Robin's thoughts drifted back to the burning giantess. Why would she be so full of rage? She must have felt... Alone. Imagine being stuck in a cave all by yourself. I go bonkers too. Robin vowed to be more understanding. If they met again. As the light pushed back the darkness, a heaviness lifted from her heart. That was strangely satisfying.
cabin was adrift on the current. Without control. Lost on the flow of lava. It would take her where it wished. Burning river went faster and faster. Robin was adrift on the current without control. Lost on the flow of lava. It would take her where it wished. Burning river went faster and faster. Okay, Robin. Remember. Empathy. You! You again! She isn't listening! Run, Robin! Run! Thundering steps shook the earth. me if I were you. Think of the mess. The smell. 
The giantess smiled. As her anger left, it brought a change. You did it again! Lump's anger gone. Lump? Nice to meet you. I'm Robin. Sorry I was so angry. Lump sorry too. Lump scares Lump when Lump's so big. Get out of here. Hmm. Hmm. Just then, Robin noticed a boom shroom she hadn't seen before. Hello, journal. Today, Sarah at school told me her granddad had a stroke too. His mouth went lopsided and he spoke a little funny. Now he mostly sits around watching the telly. I don't think Gran would enjoy that. She'd feel like she was giving up. She'd want to keep moving. Keep doing things. Gran always says, the world your kindness, and it will return it threefold. The more positive energy and kindness you give the world, the more you get back. When Mr. Parry's lawn got too high, Gran cut it for him. For the community centre meals, she baked cakes! She even does the unthinkable! She changed Ben's smelly nappies. We could do with kindness right now. Someone better step up. Me!
starting with... Bringing world peace? Cooking for the elderly? Cutting Mr. Parry's lawn? Tidying my room? Bringing order to chaos. A mighty struggle needs a suitable tagline. It's tidying time. And then I did the washing up from breakfast. Dad said... Then he bowed at my feet. He's such a complete numpty head. But it made Mum laugh. And when we got to the hospital later, Gran was sitting in a chair and looking out the window. She was smiling! So all the things I've been doing have been working. I just have to do more. There was kale for tea, which is a kind of vegetable torture. But I told myself... that if I could eat all of it, then Gran would be even better tomorrow. I ran up the stairs two at a time just to top things up. Pinky was very impressed and slept on my feet all night. I guess I felt a bit silly. I mean, who cares if I eat my kale? Well, Dad, maybe? But does any of this really make a difference? It's just, if there's a sliver of a chance, it actually does. 
I want to believe in it. Sarah told me that when her granddad was sick, she used to pray. I don't exactly know how that works, but best to hedge my bets. Please. 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 Make Gran well. family are pretty religious, not like mum and dad. I don't know that much about religion actually. I like the stories, especially the one about the ark and rescuing all the animals. Gran was raised Catholic, but I never really heard her talk about God, apart from that time she dropped the yogurts in Tesco's. We took care of the mess before the staff noticed. offered to pay for them. She said, if there is a god, they're in our actions. How we help and love one another. Seems right to me. So what should I do? I'm going to bring in my story next time we go to the hospital. I can read it to her. I think she'd like that. Maybe if I do a really good job, she can come home in time for Ben's birthday. But first, I need to get on with the story. Having escaped the flaming caves, Lump and Robin ventured into a tenebrous forest. Writing Lump is going to be fun. But if she's not so angry anymore, she might need another character for. Maybe... Uncontrollable cravings for...
gentle sunlight streamed across their faces. Sun! I missed you. Oh, sky fire is warm. Like love! That's the dragon. We've got to follow it. Dragon? Follow it. Let's go, Lump. Lump no likes to follow anything that goes. Ah! Are you coming? Just trees, Lum. Back home, we know has them. The grey forest, dark. Foreboding. Robin didn't care. Oh, you miss it? Yes. That's why I'm doing this. You miss home, but you leave it. You leave it.
Robin couldn't help but smile at Lump's silliness. Her fiery friend was finding a place near and dear to her heart. Suddenly, a strange, sweet scent filled the air. Rough nose is that smell. What is it, Lump? Looks like some kind of <laughs> a fruit. Yum yum. Lump loves fruit. Mm, that's nice. Like honey from back home. Wait. I can't let myself. We need to go. Now. But, but the fruit. Okay. Shadows deepened in the ravaged forest. We're getting closer. Do we want to be closer? Look, Lump! Dragonfire! It's here. Yes, yes. Dragon here. It's okay. Lump's okay. Robin felt her resolve melt. I need to find the dragon. I promised Elder Ava. Just what am I doing out here? All by myself? Silly human. Lump not left is in fruit. Thanks, Lump. Robin knew she wouldn't swap that little ball of fire for anything. Wow! You okay, Lump? Little dizzy, but good!
no doubt. Something strong. And very, very large. Had been here recently. with little thought for her own safety. You won't get away from me again. I won't let you. Ah, no. Come back. Come back here. realized the dragon had gone far, far below. No. I... I... Her hope was shattered. I can't. It's okay, human. We find dragon again. Have another go, right? It's okay. Love help. But how? Most of the pieces are gone. I can't even fix it. Look! You get on this, okay? doing? I'm such an idiot. What did I think I was going to do if I caught it? You tried though, human. That's important. Look! One of them's little glowy things you likes. things too, right? Huh? That's strange. Maybe there are some people around here after all.
Remember anger. Then you, human. Okay. Here love goes. Ancient energy stirred. Reaching into the place beyond. Good to be back. Already? It's only been a few millennia. Is it not wonderful to see light again? To feel sun? <laughs> I was just getting comfortable in the howling void. Who are you two? Ooh, ancient ones. Thought you was a myth. Oh, no, no, my little friend. We are very real. No, we're not. You're imagining us. Go away now. Now we're here. What can we do to help you? Mum, they could help us get to the dragon. Hmm. But nothing is free in this market or in life. You must provide three offerings to the flame. Should we? If help human, if it make human happy, lump say do it. Go away. Hello. So lovely to see you both. So, what is this place? market of the lost and the forgotten. Things end up here that have been cast aside or are no longer useful. After a time, so were we. No one came here. No one sought us. I thought we would forget ourselves, but you brought us back. You said you could help. Yes, but to give, we must also receive. Then give a kindness. I'll tell everyone about you. No one will ever forget you again. How kind of you to say. Now I will return the favor. To get your wish, you must submit an offering of hope to the flames. Something dear to your heart. Elder Raven gave me this. The pendant gleamed with hopeful memories. I don't know if I should. It was the last thing that she gave me. A wise person once said that no one ever got anything just by wanting it. Crack and a spark, and the pendant was gone in the flames. I said go away. I need help. And what do you expect me to do about it? Go away. market, right? You have to help me if I give you something. Look, buy help. It's not the kind you need. It isn't? Why? I trade in oblivion. I feast on memories. Oh. But you can still help me. 
find the sacred fireflies and bring them back to my village. Well, don't come complaining to me when there's a big dark hole in your head. What memory are you prepared to consign to the flames? Take another memory? The last offering must keep our fire burning. A gesture of hope. A friendship. But it cannot be given by you. And we've already given you something, so we're out. <laughs> what about love? You have something to give? Sure. I got love. You would give yourself to help your friend. Of course. Lum, you don't have to do this. There must be another way. This is important to Human. You freed Lum. You gave Lump memories. Lump want to give you something too. I was as sure about this. Thank you, Mum. I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye for us. Hello for you and Dragon. As little Lump jumped into the fire, the flames began to burn, larger and brighter. Robin felt a change come over her. Slits opened in her neck. Gills! She could now breathe underwater. The wish has been granted. Time for us to go. Hope you like your gift. <laughs> Thank you, Mum. I'll never forget what you did. I should go to the lake. Follow the dragon. I guess. The loss of Lump weighed heavily upon her. Where once there was light, was now darkness. Where there was noise, only cold silence remained. But she could not let Lump's sacrifice be in vain. She needed to get to the lake and use her newfound powers to pursue the dragon. The lake looked murky but she had to brave its depths.
It's 5 a.m. <laughs> Gran died in the night. Mum got the call a few hours ago. She's still crying. I just feel... to go back to sleep. But as soon as I close my eyes, the thoughts keep circling back. I've never seen a dead body before. It might be scary. But it's just grand. Right? I should have stayed at home. When we finally arrived, I wasn't so sure about being there at all. We went up the stairs to room 305. room. Mum gently put her hand on my back and asked me if I wanted to wait outside. I said 
As they came out of Gran's room. I have never seen her like this. Mums aren't supposed to cry. They're strong. They're meant to know what to do. Always. I guess losing your own mum makes you feel like a kid again. The drive home was a quiet one again. It's silly, but I keep thinking back to Gran's favourite vase. The one Grandad gave her. I was running in the house even though Gran had told me not to. I still remember the noise of the vase smashing into little pieces. Gran was there in an instant. I waited for her to shout. She didn't. She just looked sad, and somehow, that was worse. Gran wouldn't let me pick up the pieces. She found every single one. and carried them into the kitchen. Later I sneaked in with a tube of glue in hand. she'd binned the vase. She smiled again. Gran always says forever. Let them live in your memories. 
She said she preferred to keep the vase like she remembered it. Maybe I hurt Gran's heart. Weakened it. That can happen, can't it? Maybe this is all my fault. I should have listened to her. I shouldn't have run in the house. Now everything is broken. If I'd started my story sooner, Gran could have read it. It might have helped. I could... I could have fixed... I would have fixed her heart. to fix my story. It's a mess. I left Robin to sink into cold, dark waters. She's completely alone. She left behind Lump, her only friend. Okay, focus, Izzy. Continue the story. How would she feel about this situation? Robin felt. Ambivalent. We're getting somewhere. Now, let's see. The merchants had been true to their offer. Still, the water closing over her felt like death. Cold and terrifying. I can breathe! This feels so... strange. Wish Lump could have been here. There was nothing I could have done. Was there? But there was no time to dwell on her lost friend. Robin had a dragon to find! Which way did it go? 